working? Okay, we'll do. I'm not sure. Yeah, she just heard me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Robert Lanny. I'm the co-artistic director of Willie Gate Productions. Thank you very much for your patience. We were setting up the live stream to that camera right over there. Everybody wave to the internet. Hello, internet. Those people are your fellow audience members tonight, and they will be interacting with the play just like you. Um, so on behalf of Whirly Gate Productions, Fuse Box and also Shrewd Productions, the three producers of this show, we want to welcome you tonight. Over at Worldly Day, we've been thinking about this play, its mechanics, its art, its possibilities for five years, five sometimes long and crazy years. And we want to thank you for being here tonight at the final consummation of it all, for supporting us along the way, and for generally being awesome. Please give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> financial support, we wouldn't be here tonight. Okay, uh, a few bits of business. I would like for everyone to please pull out your phones. I'll wait. And I would like for you to turn them on. <laughs> I hope that all of you had a 
chance to talk to the priestesses out in the lobby. Uh, read the uh, instructional bulletin insert inside your playbill. Make sure that you're set up to talk to the gods. For the online audience, it's in the chat room. Uh, and if you didn't, or if you have no idea what we're talking about, just raise your hands for just a moment, and one of these fine folks are going to come out to you, quietly get you set up, make sure you're ready to participate. Tonight is your night, and we don't want you missing a thing. Okay, so while the priestesses are helping anyone else out, a few more bits of business. Tonight is closing night of this wonderful run of the play. We're so happy to have you. Uh, Rory Gay is already thinking about our next production, which will treat on surveillance and espionage and cover the city in mission-based uh, tours throughout the city. Uh, that will be a little bit down the road. It's going to be a big fight to chew. We also hope this production will have subsequent lives. You can always connect with Worthy Gig at WorthyGigProductions.com, also ShrewdProductions.com, and FeudBoxFestival.com, our amazing co-producers. Uh, looks like the priestesses are about ready, which means that we're about ready to go. But I've got to warn you, this is not your typical night of theater. I, I know that it would be cliché to say that we've thrown out the rule book, but I'm not the playwright, so I'm stuck with crappy clichés I promise that the writing gets better from here on out. Uh, okay, we're ready. I I'm excited for you, so now without further ado, I'd like to welcome you to Liz Fisher's Deus Ex Ma! <laughs> Do you have any idea what it's like? 
right? I did. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> the portal's painting again my face right in the goddamn painting. Do you see a big white beard? of a god. I mean, do you speak a language where the word exist is a normal word like round or blue or woman's dress or is it something else entirely? Well, oh, is that too much? <laughs> it's a little too early in the evening to be asking those kind of questions. You didn't think it was going to be one of those kind of plays? Well, tough shit! I just made it one of those kinds of plays. You want to know why? Because I I just have like a couple of millennia of feelings trapped up in here. Like, like all the feelings. <laughs> it just has not been a good day. Oh, fuck that. It's like a good century. Oh. I mean, hundreds, thousands of years go by, and where am I now? In a big black fucking box. <laughs> oh, wow. No, don't everybody rush up all at once and try to make me feel better. I mean, who wants you to leave your comfy seat at your hot day? Who knows you can make it back up to five feet in the semi darkness? Might have to get an usher to whip out one of their flashlights. I see what kind of people you are. The shadows, the ones that sit in the dark and pass judgment on oh, what you see. Well, you think you're so much better than me? You're so fucking smart. You can have it. All of it, all the power, all the prestige. All the heartburn. You lot seem to be good at making choices tonight. Chose to be here or chose to sit on your ass in front of your laptop. <laughs> so, <laughs> why don't you try your hand at being the almighty God that is responsible for making shit happen? I'm done. <laughs> if God ain't dead, he's going on strike. <laughs> I'm G.G. Gilman. I don't know how to be a god. Well, you know, you know those people I say, unbunch your panties and relax, it ain't that fucking hard. <laughs> when these stupid humans begin their sacrificing of doves, goats, octet hair wine babies, followed immediately by the groveling, praying, or whatever the mortals are calling that socially sanctioned, wow, wow, my life is so hard these days, you get to tell them what to do. You gotta make this transfer of power official like. Not sure I remember how to do this. First, the sacrifice. Did anybody bring their firstborn son? <laughs> no, how about just his balls? <laughs> oh, shit, you're getting were useless. All right, this ain't gonna be a permanent state because somebody didn't feel like sharing their testicles.
teensiest amount of truth wrapped up in a big old fuck a lie. <laughs> no, I did not fuck a cow. <laughs> she was a woman. <laughs> and then a cow. You got it? <laughs> Shit, how many times have we got to set that straight? <laughs> Where was I? Oh. Choice! Choice, yes. You will have to decide the path that these dopey humans take together. That's right. Together. Just because now you're a god to the tune of like two or so hours. Doesn't mean you get to go all rogue gun slinging vigilante on the universe under the gnome. You're tied to the same rules as the rest of us on the present day. You have to decide these things democratically. You ever heard of it? <laughs> what, you think the Athenians came up with democracy all by themselves? <laughs> Fuck you, try again, that was us. <laughs> Everybody gets one vote regardless of your gender or land owning status. Majority rule. Now you can discuss it amongst yourselves to see which way to go or yell. My wife, she was a yeller. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to decide these things quickly. You don't want these humans dying of old age while you pick over the finer points of morality. Now, these humans have two ways that they can pester you. Option one. You have a popular rhetorical question to the god, but humans are always asking questions. I know you've seen this too. Just suddenly somebody stops and asks them thin air, God, what am I supposed to do? <coughs> yeah, those. You get a lot of those. They're vast, they're short, which means you don't get a lot of control. You just kind of get to whisper advice. Now, these little moments of power are so fleeting, you're going to miss them if you aren't paying attention. And you aren't going to want to miss out on this kind of fun. So, look out for this. You get to answer one for yes, two for no. That's it. You only get two options, it never changes, and you got to answer fast. How hard is that? Seeing a lot of blank faces. Uh, <laughs> Alright, tell you what, we'll play a little game, a little game for Ken. I'll pretend to be one of these silly ass shit that's asking for guidance. Um, so, so again, dun 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 I'm just a dumb human and don't know what to do. I'm surrounded by all these beautiful priestesses, and all I really want to do is make out with one of them. <laughs> More specifically, that one. Gods!
turn away to my soul, and I know not which way to turn. Help me, guide me, save me. I'm but a lonely soul on this rock, hoping, longing, seeking. How can I go on when I only got a taste of the pleasure that lies just outside my grasp? So I ask you, who will share my bed? Whatever you command, I will perform.
Yes.
I've got the medicine, follow me. Asking 
for help is weak. I don't do weak. <coughs> but if you tell me what to do, I will become your faithful servant. Prove to me that you are listening. Hera hears you and hears you. Now we must wait for the gods to determine your fate in your face. As they debate, As they debate you must pray. You must pray. <coughs> Clear your mind. Clear your mind. Open your spirit. Hold this question in your heart, and you shall receive your answer.
Yes. Give it what you will. 
For my part, I remember nothing. And as for me and for my friends, we're finished! Home! At last! But stripped of whatever it was we had. Before, the quiet moments between battles were not moments of peace, but periods of mounting tension anticipating their release. Now, there will be no release, only the waiting. Sensation is dead. Time moves on, but it has lost whatever in it was brilliant.
the fruits and labours of peacetime are passing down to a new generation the values we all cherish. A world restored! Hell, don't abandon me. I can live not. My king and my pastor. Welcome home. Where to begin? What to say? I'll I want to catalog the minutia of everything you missed. I want to etch into your soul the bitter lessons I learned from waiting. When your husband flips his life on a coin, heads, tails, and the foreign dust of strange lands, we women battle enemy combatants of a more private nature. Sleep brought no coin. Only visions of your death bursting out of the darkness, soaking my bed with blood. But now we banish those dark thoughts with sweeter words, homecoming and joy. <laughs> My husband, come. Come home to me. Come into our bed. Lie with me in my arms forever. But first, we must honor the conqueror who has left Troy as a bloody state upon the earth. A special treat for our king who has sacrificed so much. Guardian of my throne, my wife. Your speech is like my actions. Too long. <laughs> Too much. Leave the speech of mine to the politician. This is not your place. And take back those red cross. No mortal man should ever tread on treasures such as this. Greet me as a man. No more, no less. Greet me as a god, and the gods will make us pay. Even if the oracle or great Zeus himself forbade me, I would still cover all Arcos with silks like this, if it guaranteed you a safe arrival home. This is not for me, for voting circles in my veins. <laughs> Indulge me just this once. Please. If I were to promise to undress you very carefully, Wash the dust of travel from your body very mm -hmm. slowly. You make it hard <laughs> <laughs> for me to refuse. <laughs> Bathe your tired eyes with my tongue. If the king of Troy had one, would he be so demure? Priam? <laughs> he wouldn't have thought twice. Perhaps that's why his city is still smoldering. Does it suit a man to be so much humbler than those he's beaten? Does it suit a woman to be so aggressive? Why be so insistent? Why be so set against even the littlest desire of your wife? I think these red silks suit you. Then too, does it not suit greatness to accept defeat with grace? And you, so accustomed to being victor in all things, I've had so little opportunity to show this form of magnanimity and accept this honor I would give you. So this is a contest which you have to win. You have the persistence of a great soldier. Gods! <laughs> Tell me what I should do. Give me a sign to let me know if I should yield. Like, I can't remember a time when there was something worth celebrating. Preach, 
my sister, after so many years of heart grief, joy. What the hell is wrong with the two of you? There's something in the air and it doesn't smell right. Oh, right up, Sour Puss, what could possibly go wrong? You are saying hey, so
But even I know that that doesn't sound good. Why can't we have a prophet who brings good news, huh? Perfect vision is agony. Besides, humans don't really want good news. It's easier to believe in the end of the world than happy. Children, the adults are trying to have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> what is a princess of Troy and Apollo's favorite prophetess doing in my country? Gods!
at least since you took that rodent into our bed. Our country has very clear rules for dealing with whores like you. You left me alone. He, only he stood up as my protector beside me. There's a lonely place for a woman at the top. Oh, poor thing, was it too hard running a country? You should try running a war. Sending your brightest and best to certain death because your bluff wasn't convincing enough. So, let's skip these petty blame games no more. Frown speech, please. How would you rather continue with knowing looks and terse monosyllables? Or talk about how you're going to try to kill me? I, who have been a bride of force. Do you not think that I have suffered enough away from you? That you couldn't take me back to your bed? Forgive me, lie with me, our arms around each other, to make love? Yeah, uh, you can stop doubting me that word, I give an actress. Oh, no. <laughs> I've been trying to be civil there. I thought you would try to keep up appearances, but it looks like you're taking a more direct route. Fine. I haven't begun to fight. Truly, you have the audacity to stand there and speak to me of fighting. It may be that you have never seen what it is to fight. What a man may do when the rules of restraint are taken off. It may be that you don't know. A man is always on battle alert, always lying in ambush, always straining all his senses, rigid with attention, waiting to explode like bats from dark dungeons when they've been aroused. A wicked pleasure hangs over war, the voluptuousness of blood, the feelings blossom in the surging of the blood, like a long postponed night of love making, but this night more passionate and more furious, the blood <laughs> bubbling in our hearts like fire. There is some deep pleasure in killing, some quivering love of life, <laughs> some giddiness, some exhilaration like no other. I took no pleasure in killing a geese. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> if a person faces a life or death situation, the choice on behalf of survival is justified. And this, uh, this is why he had to die. That and the fact that he was the most spineless, lifted, bottom feeder alive. Say so yes, maybe there was some pleasure.
society at peace is founded on mutual promises. When such promises are broken, when one party on its own decides to enforce its preference by some unilateral action, then if the relationship continues, it is based on coercion. Force has come into play. War has been declared. A peaceless violated our peace. And so we have annihilated him, and we would do it again. We exacted the law upon these two traitors. No more, no less. Fucking strict interpretation of the law. <laughs> I thought kings were supposed to believe in things like mercy. Kings believe in civilization. Civilization is a treasure. It is complex, not simple. A mess that took hundreds of thousands of years, the lives of millions, building from the blood and bones of generations, and we must defend it! There is such a thing as a necessary death. And now you are witness to two of them. Is it not strange, Agamemnon? now? Think on it. That our eyes invariably deceive us even when we know we have excellent sight. You look at the sun every day and you see a small disk just a few inches in diameter. And we know the truth is so very far from us. We know that it is hundreds of thousands of times larger than our senses can even comprehend. The gods have built error into your senses. Adam and not. It is our reason on which we must rely for true knowledge. So Yahweh, and you will see how your gods have deceived you. No, cursed you with your senses, for they cannot perceive any other way but falsely. So tell me, Adam and what do you see? I see a young woman who is tired from her journey and overexcited by the dramas of today. Otherwise, she would not speak so unwisely. Come, wife. Let's get you someplace quiet where you can rest for a bit. Welcome. To your new home. Athena, what have I done? I didn't think you would actually kill her. She was his wife, his queen. Because, are you sorry for all this? Huh? How, how can you bear all this evil? Are you ready to burst open and vomit up the hellish underworld? I mean, by now we should. We should all be in that dark world of Tantalus and the dearly departed. No, even Lola, hiding in a huge chasm buried under the river. And the guilty souls, they can wander over our heads. And the, and the fiery bloods pour lava over our bodies. But, but see, but see, but see. No, the earth, the earth is still and heavy. Unmoved. The gods have left the building. Oh no! No, child! The gods are still here. They would never leave you. They're just they're just waiting for you. So so go. Go to the Oracle. Ask for their help. Show the world the great power that exists in the pursuit of assistance. And what would be my prayer? The prayer for my father's return is the only prayer I have had for the last 10 years. What about your brother? What about the rest of us? He's, yes. he's on the other side of the world, hiding from the chaos that haunts this house. Joshua, maybe, maybe, maybe Orestes. Yes, if I go to the Oracle, then, then the, only the gods can bring Orestes back, and then he can help fix the imbalance in this house. Yes, yes. Justice brings everything to a balance. For every word, another word. For hatred, more hatred. For sacrilege, a messy death. For pride, a broken neck. Generation of gener after generation have proven the truth of this law. Yes. 
than to the Oracle I will come. I'm sorry, Mother. You deserve better, <laughs> even from me. I only pray that the gods will remember that. I don't know if I can go to the Oracle or the moon. Gods. <laughs> Do I have to go to the Oracle or the moon? Yes. Is she asking if one of us can go to the Dear child, we know your birth. The gods see all. Ease your mind and speak your fears. Put your thoughts to sleep. Let go of thinking. Just be. Baby brother 
<laughs> just because it made him laugh uncontrollably. <laughs> so that man died in Troy. And then they, they ship back this pod person, this pale imitation. <laughs> no, no. Dark deviation of my father because the man that was my father would never have. Come on, Electra, pull it together. Just don't you know, dishonor your mother and your sister's fates by sugarcoating them, but it's, I mean, it's just that the man, the man that was my father, would never have slaughtered my mother. So then, who is this demon sitting on the throne of our because, because it cannot be my
Can you use a real answer? Anybody uh, who voted for the shovel want to tell me why you went that way? Anybody at all? I'm not in the form of a swan, I won't. <laughs> 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 you want to speak up? I want to bury it. You want what? Bury it. You want to bury it? Just it? <laughs> bury it. Okay.
I was looking for you out there. I
I'm not, I'm not sure it ever officially became.
no, no, you're fine. Okay. Yay, I didn't think we're here again.
<laughs> I pray to the gods to grant me the truth, to illuminate the blackness that blinds my eyes, but now the light is blinding. I wish I had stayed in the dark. Then I take it things didn't go well at the Oracle. <coughs> Sorry, the gods gave you something good, huh? Hardly. They gave me more of what I already have. Insult. No, 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 please tell me they didn't tell you to, that's more death, I, I can't handle any more death, huh? uh, please, anything but death. Nope, they told me to grin and bear it, what else could this mean? I mean, what kind of advice is that? A am I supposed to sit around and play the placid princess and wait for some big strong man to come and save me? I'm sure that's not what the gods were saying. The opposite of action is not submission. So you say. But I am under the thumb of the gods. They have made me powerless. It's just that this, this blow has come. Well, it's just that it's, well, out of the blue. See, I'm knocked off my feet. The breath knocked out of me. And my faith in goodness crushed like an insignificant flea. What reason is there to carry on? And, and at the center of all this, my father, the one whom I thought I'd known so well, has revealed himself to be my destroyer. Not so loud, not so loud. The air has ears. The tongue's favorite taste is retelling another man's secrets. There be tyrants and lap these words like a honey milk. Whom, if the gods are kind, will take that milk and curdle it to poison, filling his body and bloating it and twisting it like a spoiled nothing. That's certainly one possibility. Or maybe you could try patience. I mean, we don't know yet how this might turn out. <laughs> Miss, you can't be here. The king is coming here. Since when does the public have a clear out when the king wants to walk through the palace? I cannot read his mind. <laughs> Do you have any fucking idea who I am? Hello, hmm? daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout their land, trying to murder husbands. 
Hunting pity with bared breasts. They'd be killing their men at the slightest pretext. I put a stop to this. And worse, knowing the ambition of that woman. Yes, she was my mother. And loyalty is to be admired to a point. Even if that mother was herself a barracuda. <laughs> I know, I know. One mustn't use certain expressions these days with your generation. One mustn't call people barracudas, for example, no matter how they are. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. She was your mother after all. My wife. Now, even if she was a slut, draw distinctions and make her make judgments. She these things are never quite so simple. Yes, they are. One doesn't try to govern another man's emotions. Another man's imagination, his secrecies, indulgences, passions, they swim so long as they do no harm to the bodies of others. Perhaps for actions, those we govern all the time and should. That's what it is to be a king. Nothing else. Oh, yes, yes. That is all I see when I look at you. Just a king. Nothing else. Not a father. Just a king. Or maybe. And beauty requires that you love your king. Never before have I loved and hated a man like you. Then I suppose that will be. Cassandra, come here. Meet your new daughter. What? No! Here. 
and you are the one who invaded it. Oh, the father did to mine? Don't worry, I won't wake anybody, though. Is that supposed to be funny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Do you ever think 
about the other world. <laughs> you know, I do. I think about the world burning and everything is on fire and there's nowhere to run and there is nowhere to hide. You ever do that? I know one final place. Oh my God. Yes, I can pack and I can leave today. No, no, then you misunderstand me. If you follow me, you don't need to pack. You would be free from all of this and finally some silence. Are you going to stop me? No. I have no right to stop you. Everything else has already been taken from you in a while. I didn't have to do that to you. It's funny, I would like to think that in some other life, you know, you and I might have been friends. No, it never works out for us in any timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Which one did you say again? Uh, the infantry, 12th Division. You're kidding. Then you must be my cousin, Bob. Sure, yeah, Bob. Nice to meet you. Sure. God's going to be free of him. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. You mean the uh, house of the chip? Excuse me. Oh, Jesus, Princess. I was showing one of our veterans the palace. He served with my cousin. His name is. I'm sorry I didn't catch it. I didn't give it. Sorry? The biggest wish fulfilled. No way. The gods would never be so kind. They all. They brought me home. <laughs> Your beloved oh! father! Oh, no. 
come to Gong Pong. Search the palace grounds and bring him to me here. Yes, sir. So this is a dream. Only a dream. There's no stopping him. There's nothing to do but pray for him. And pray that prayers matter. Pray? Where could I possibly pray a prayer big enough to solve the problems of this wretched place? Um, what, what was that? Huh? God, why did you fill my home with imbeciles? Apollo, I need your help. We'll go to the Oracle. Surely the gods would abandon their son in a time like this. Well, I guess another the history there. Yeah. What's she say? <laughs> now, now, how do you feel about books of mystery? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> go to the Nazis. To the Oracle. Go. Be quick. You know where I got the fellow, really? None of you had the balls to tell the boy how shitty his family's track record is at the Oracle? <laughs> <laughs> 
Decisions made before I could talk are what brought me here today. And now I must play out their inevitable end. Us mortals like to think that we have some degree of control over our lives. But maybe the only thing we're really in control over is how tightly we close our eyes to what's really happening. Oh, 
how it's a risky time for Whoever is in charge of the skies, wrap the whole earth in dark, rough clouds. From the four corners at once, send fire and thunder and let them wage their war on Argos, for there is nothing else this city is good for. You gods, burn this evil day away, let judgment day begin. Don't bother with the judgment. I'll make a decision for you. Good is fled and all is left is bad. If these words fail to move the gods, I pray they cover us in infinite darkness. <laughs> I've got nothing to bitch about if the sun never again comes up. <laughs> Why are you crying? There's tears in your eyes. It doesn't matter. It's useless. Orestes is dead. Oh, God. We saw him die. Oh, God. The most auspicious of men. The most fortunate beast, Lucky. <laughs> we saw his death. My son is gone. Where is he? I want to hold him. Why are the gods? He's so greedy. Why would they demand his death? What fault of lightning did I send from Olympus to strike him down? Tell me who, or I swear I'll kill you when you stand. You did. No. <laughs> you were right. Cassandra's death. You were right. <laughs> what was precious son of Scorpion? you? From your first day to now. He will never give him a chance. The gods now see fit to punish me for wasting you. What is my life now? A smoking pot of regret. Agamemnon, you must let this go. Argos needs you now more than ever. Do not let Argos lose its king again. <laughs> my son is young. He's, he's lost his life. Friends, he's, he's dead. On the most misfortunate of fathers. Ah! Nothing will bring him back to me! There's no remedy for the pain I feel I want to run! Far from you, old men, and this detested place! Far from the blood! of my murdered son. Banish myself from the whole white world. Oh, fingers points to my foul fist. I, I can't hide in shadows or corners. The hateful gods are me, mocking me with their murderous favors. I tell you all, they kill with kindness. Give and take, and the take it is hard. The gods always ask the greatest price of their most beloved. This hardship falls on you now, Agamemnon, to sweeten what is to come. That is the worst thing you could ever say to a grieving father or anyone who suffered a tragedy. Well, could you do any better? Well, no, but at least I'm not afraid to admit it.